Uh, I'm looking forward to sharing some of our thoughts on the key commercial opportunities that are out there in the global coal markets at the moment, and also a little bit about what we see as the key needs for the companies who are looking to take advantage of those opportunities in those markets. So first, a little bit of uh, information about what Trade Cloud's role is in the coal markets and therefore what our perspective is on this situation. The Trade Cloud is a communications platform for the physical commodities industry, a, a place where buyers and sellers can access markets, communicate and trade efficiently through a platform. It was created in 2016 by a group of traffic guru executives who set out with the mission of enabling physical commodity traders through technology. So our coal platform has been growing in users since its launch in 2020. Uh, however, the combination of uh, COVID and the trade war between China and Australia that we heard a lot from Raki earlier about has accelerated um, adoption in the platform. So you'll see on the chart on the left that our coal activity has been increasing month on month on 2021 with April outstripping the combined numbers in Q1 2021. And also the first two weeks in June already doubling the volumes on the previous month. So we're seeing you know, a, a change in our users activity and adoption um, through those two drivers. Now, the purpose of this presentation is to explore what's happening in the global coal markets at the moment and discuss what's needed for companies to optimize their performance in these changing markets. We've taken a look at market data, uh, our experience as uh, traders with our backgrounds at, uh, at Trafigura, and also taken some insights generated from our own platform, Trade Cloud uh, Energy, to facilitate a little bit of our view on the marketplace. So if I progress to the next slide, um, what's been happening? So um, global economic growth is strong, but importantly, it's also being boosted by latent demand, catch up demand from 2020. It's basically compounding the position that we have from the economy at the moment, given that in 2020, we underproduced things. So we're now catching up. So demand is actually over and above the ordinary demand in times of similar economic growth. So pushing markets to outperform across the, the complex. Um, the two key areas that we've been talking about, COVID and the Chinese ban on imports have been game changers for the global coal trade in our views. Massive impacts to trade flows, freight, congestion in, 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 and inventories. Um, and the trade war itself is showing, showing no material sign of ending anytime soon, despite the difficulties that it's causing on both sides. So we're seeing a diversification of customer bases for coal players out there in the market, often into developing countries. So that's generated some winners. You know, on the sell side, on the MET coal, US, Canadian, and Mongolian suppliers seen the benefit, and on thermal coal, Indonesian and Russian suppliers. And on the buy side, both coking coal and thermal coal into India and non-Chinese steel mills have really seen. Taking a look at the chart, you know, we can see on the table from Iman Coal, we can see at the top right. Uh, the year-on-year -year change of Australian imports into India, reflecting Jan to April of 357%. Uh, anecdotally, that's something that we all hear about, but the numbers back it up. Similarly, on the chart in the middle from IHS market, uh, we can see that coal loadings bound for China, once regularly around 10 million tonnes per month, have jumped down to zero, basically, as of the beginning of the year. But... On the right hand side in the table, it's been a time of records. You know, so we've seen highs yesterday, the FOB Richards Bay cargo at $116 a ton, the highest since October 2018. Um, and we've seen near term records or pushing all term records in the complex in general, in the metallurgical coal, or iron ore, and, and in steel products. So, as I said earlier, the the, the trade war is showing no sign of really changing soon. On trade clouds, We've also seen evidence from behavior on our platform from the coal participants that reflects what we see anecdotally in the market and in the numbers. So we see offered prices for coking coal delivered to China and Canada and the US double the prices of Australian FOB offered equivalent material. 
And also on the thermal coal side, we're seeing low CV Indonesian thermal coal prices offered above the high CV Australian qualities um, on the platform. So we, we're seeing activity in our customer base that reflects what we know is going on out there in the market. So that's what's really been happening. Um, when analyzing this market and, and looking at it from our perspective, we, we've established three core needs that we think that companies looking to thrive in these markets need to deal with, which is what we're gonna go on to and discuss now. So the first of these core needs is the need to diversify your customer base. So COVID and the trade war will meaningfully change the global coal industry, as I mentioned before. Um, and one of those key changes is going to be the need for diversification of supply chains and critically the customer base. If you take the example of Australia, which is very familiar to us now since the import ban, it's managed to diversify its customer base and exporting more coal into emerging economies such as Turkey and India, but also leaning more on its existing incumbent um, uh, counterparts such as Korea and Japan. But it's not been easy. In doing this, in managing the Chinese import ban, they've had to approach new markets, new customers. They've had to manage recent COVID outbreaks that subdue activity in those markets and also navigate the price differentials that are there. The point being here, if you want to find buyers and explore new markets, it takes work. We can see here the comparison of Australian American share in Indonesian thermal coal. You see it clearly jumping up to above 25% of the Indian market's imports. And also in Indonesian coal exports, a clear jump to fill the gap in the Australian uh, import ban into China from Indonesia. But that comes with the need to establish new customer base, get to know those customers, ensure performance, and try and generate a long-term relationship with those people. So this is something that we're also observing on our platform. So there's been a step change in the activity of our coal users on the Trade Cloud platform. They're actively expanding their customer base into previously unexplored markets. So we see our users actively looking into markets that were not traditionally there, such as India or into China from the Indonesian side, right? And people generally exploring the community on Trade Cloud more to try and establish those communication lines with new customers. And also using the platform to qualify those customers. So not just trying to find uh, customers, but actually try and qualify them as are these performing buyers, right? So we've seen that change in the way that people have been using the technology. And we think it's reflected by these big restructures that have come and the need to diversify their customer base. At that point, we have our first uh, poll, I think, Julia. So I'll pause and let you bring that up. Great. Thank you very much. Um, so the question for the poll is, do you think technology will change the way that coal companies access a wider customer base? Yes, no, maybe don't know. So I'm going to give you a few moments to answer. And I'm now going to share the results. So 70% yes, 23% maybe, 4% no, 2% don't know. Mm. So it's a very interesting response because when you speak to customers face to face, particularly in the coal market, there is often a, a, a inherent resistance to change. But um, what we see is that the pressures on the market have caused such big changes and restructures of flows that there is almost no other option. And this is the, the pain that's been caused that requires that adoption of technology. Trade Cloud is operating in metals, energy, gas, crude, and so on. And we, so we see how the different markets adopt technology and use it. And we're seeing this interesting transition uh, in recent months during 2021 of the coal participants starting to be more interested in technological change. 70% is a very big response rate. So moving on to uh, the next need that we feel has been established by the marketplace. Number two is the need to be flexible. So what we've seen is that in the recent months, players who've not been able or willing to look at new trade flows are the ones who have suffered. 
Um, you know, we can see, for example, in the middle chart from IHS, their M42 index for Indonesian coal, how the price movement has evolved over the last two years. And we see in the, the sort of towards from the end of the first quarter until now, a dramatic move in pricing. Um, we can see on the right hand side also that the trade war has profoundly changed the relationship between different products. On the right hand side, you see the spread between CFR delivered coking coal into China and the FOB number for equivalent material from Australia. And you see that spread has exploded to levels uh, which we haven't seen in recent past. Now, those players who've been able or willing to look at those new trade flows have benefited, such as the US, Canadian, and Mongolian coking coal producers. On the left-hand side, coal fleet expansions demonstrate the need to be able to market flexibly in the long term. We, have, we need flexibility between traditional and growing markets. So we have expansions coming in China, obviously, which is an existing market, but there we need to navigate the risk of Chinese policy swings, which are fluid, very hard to predict. And then we have emerging Asia, India, and Turkey developing economies which are coming into the market in much more force, meaning that we need to be able to expand and market between those unknown areas for many producers flexibly. Um, there are other examples out there, not reflected in the charts here, for example, high sulfur coal being shipped out of New Orleans that has increased dramatically in volumes to June. But the differential between that high sulfur coal and equivalent coal outside of the US has expanded, showing that there is a price dislocation even though volumes are moving. New Orleans has risen by 32%, while equivalent Colombian coal has climbed by 61%. Companies need to be more flexible to take advantage of these arbitrages. So the ability for these companies to benefit is driven by that flexibility that they can build into their books. The policy maintains these artificial arbitrages. However, when those policies shift, when those policies change, those companies need to have the built-in flexibility already in their books to be able to capitalize. And again, pointing back to what we see on the platform, we see behavior from the coal market reflecting this. So we've seen an increase in coal users building that diversified community of customers, maintaining open communication with those customers, even though their flows are not currently going into those regions, because they are in anticipation of continuing changes to trade flows in the market. Moving on to need number three, the last of the three needs, the need to quickly establish and maintain relationships. So it's easy to just think that everything will go back to normal. And it's possible that some things will. We don't know when, we're not sure when Chinese policy may change. But it's very likely that in the coking coal market, the China CFR Australia FOB spread will likely contract. But we don't think it will go back to the previous levels. Chinese buyers will continue to lean on the new relationships that they've built through this period of time. Take a look at how it's changed year on year in terms of the distribution of imports uh, on, on, the, on the, both the coking coal side and the thermal side. We see a big change in Indonesian imports and in Russian imports into, into, the, into China, and obviously the obvious reduction in Australia. But the Chinese are building trade relationships there, ones that they're not just going to walk away from. Right, so they've established these relationships and they're going to maintain them. So this spread is not going to close completely. Also, on the coking coal side, we see a similar flip in terms of the, the distribution of imports. These Mongolian, Russian, US and Canadian relationships that have been built are not going to just disappear. So some things will change, but some things have also changed for good. So we believe that marketing has changed permanently and risk management has changed permanently. So as companies need to diversify their customer base, build flexibility into their books, the importance of managing counterparty risk increases. Going into new markets comes with more risk. Getting people onboarded quickly and getting them through your, their, your know your customer process is important. The more efficient and effective that companies can be at doing that, 
the better they will be at taking advantage of these opportunities. Australian units becoming displaced from incumbent markets such as Japan and Korea was always going to happen, but that's been accelerated because of what's been happening with COVID and with the, with the Aussie bans, and we don't think that they're going to reverse. So the import ban has accelerated this process, and if guaranteed performers are established in other areas than China, then we don't see these trade flows reversing 100% in the future. We see that if you're able to quickly, easily build and establish long-term relationships in order to access those new markets on a flexible basis and mitigate the risk that comes from policy changes and the resulting restructures of the market, then you position yourself in a way to take advantage of those. And again, coming back to what we see on the Trade Cloud platform with our coal users, how is their behavior reflecting this? We see our users using the platform to efficiently stay in touch with a wider customer base, using technology to stay in touch with many more of their potential customers without spending so much time in a secure environment and using our inbuilt KYC function to establish those relationships as quickly and effectively as possible without needing to raise the associated uh, effort and admin of doing so or create local presence in markets which are unfamiliar to them. So coming to the end of the presentation now in, in summary, actually, Julia, there was one more poll, wasn't there? I've gone ahead. Could you run that poll for me? Absolutely. So the next poll, the question is, do you think establishing a wider base of trusted customers is the answer to managing market shakeups like Chinese import bans? The options are yes, no, maybe, or I don't know. So I'll just leave that running for a few more moments. And now I'm going to share the results. <clears throat> so as you can see, 71% said yes, 15 maybe, 9 no, and 5 I don't know. Okay. Thank you, Julia. So what we see is the results of this is that, you know, these polls is that, yes, technology is going to meaningfully change how we address these changes in the coal market. And we also see that diversifying our customer base is an essential step mitigating the risk of those changes. And so bringing those two together, using technology to expand your user base of qualified customers and access them more easily, more quickly, more effectively, is really what we're focused on. Whether you use Trade Cloud to do it or not, we believe that's what needs to be done to remain competitive. So in summary, COVID in the trade war has changed the global coal industry in our view in a way that diversification of supply chains is essential and critically customer basis. We think it's in particularly important for coal companies to tackle three things. One, diversify your customer base. Create a network from the base from which you can manage changing markets. Build in processes in your marketing and procurement that allows you to be flexible executing a commercial strategy and establish and maintain relationships on a long-term basis, qualify your customers to ensure that you can get performance out of new markets when you need to move in changing markets. So companies that have tackled these needs, one to three, fared best during the latest months, the market restructures that we've seen. And those needs will remain for the key to being commercially successful going forward. As I mentioned, new technologies offer exciting approaches to enable that edge. And I think the coal market should spend a good amount of time looking at the other commodities markets, how they've adopted new technologies to solve similar problems. So that brings me to, to the end. I, I just want to say, you know, before any questions, thank you very much for joining us for this presentation. If you'd like to know more about Trade Cloud, we're very easy to get in touch with. We can discuss more about Trade Cloud. We'd like to have discussions with people about how technology can play its role in our markets. Um, and perhaps you want to join our community of buyers and sellers. It's, a, it's free to join. So you can find us on our website or through LinkedIn very easily and don't hesitate to reach out. My name is Daph Davis. I'm Global Head of Marketing and Revenue at Trade Cloud, and I'd love to hear from you.